Last week, or maybe two weeks ago, I posted a video of my fall TBR. It was like 20 books. And then the week after that, I posted another video about fall romance recommendations and added a few more books to my TBR. So naturally, I am kicking off today's video with a book that was on neither of those TBRs. It's an absolute sickness. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Will I ever make it through any of the books on my TBR? But I just got this book in the mail for my book of the month pick for September and come on the cover It was just giving fall vibes. This is you again by Kate Goldbeck And I quickly read like the inside jacket and it sounded like a enemies to lovers sort of trope Can they stop hating each other long enough to fall in love? right up my alley sign me up anyways i ended up starting this one last night and actually had to restrain myself not to just finish it last night because i was devouring this i love this so far i am on page 173 right now the two main characters are just so ridiculous we have ari which is she's such a relatable queen also a new york setting which i also just adore always she is struggling to make it as a comedian she works a slew of like odd jobs she is so funny and then we have josh he is like this very angry <laughs> top chef also struggling with his own life things and these two have like a series of bizarre run-ins over like an eight year time span the first one where they meet is they're actually sleeping with the same girl needless to say they did not start out on the right foot they meet again three years later does not go any better than the first time then again two more years later and finally another three years later where they actually bump into one another and choose to hang out again both their lives have just kind of fallen apart, so they're not really hanging out as friends and definitely not as lovers. They're more so clinging to one another because they're both miserable in their own ways. As they say, misery loves company, so these two are definitely feeding off one another's misery but like i said i'm 173 pages in right now it's definitely a slow burn which i am really liking in this instance because then you do really get to see the feelings start to develop and i just feel like there's a little bit more character building and it's just a little bit more realistic to me but these two so far in the story nothing romantic has happened between them i am just so excited for the moment that it does because these two oh my gosh there's so much sexual tension and Ari in particular is like a very sex positive person whereas Josh he seems a little bit more reserved but previously Ari has never really believed in relationships she's always just found it easier to just hook up and move on. I think a lot of that does stem from a rocky childhood, which she alludes to, but we haven't gotten much of that yet. So anyways, I feel like when these two finally get together, it is going to be so spicy. I can't wait, but yes. So like halfway through right now, I love it. I'm just having so much fun reading it. I don't want it to end, but I also, I need but I'll keep you guys posted. I did also get a pumpkin cold brew, but I have no self-control So I did chug it before this video. Sorry, not sorry. Let's let's get into this Say hi, Bob <laughs> Yay! Love a big stretch happening <laughs> break time look at this stunning fried rice oh a salad oh egg rolls i forgot i got those miso soup and some teriyaki chicken and vegetables absolutely living my best life at the moment just a casual mukbang moment. Anyways, update, almost done, kind of. I'm on page 266 right now, and I am so in love with these two, it's insane. This book, I, at the moment, it is currently everything to me. That is so good. Both the main characters have issues with relationships, but in their own way. Ari's issue specifically is commitment, so 
they're obviously like bordering this line of like what are we and there's all of these doubts and second thoughts and like I don't want to mess up what we already have by taking this any further so I'm kind of in the middle of that where they're like kind of teetering on the edge of what this really could be and I want to cry I love them so much it's so 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 good so I have like 130 pages left yum this book is gonna make me cry <laughs> just got to page 317 and I'm in shambles. So close. Oh my god, hold on. Where am I? Ah! After spending the entire day on the couch, I finished it. Honestly, if you are a rom-com lover looking for a good fall romance, maybe a fan of Harry Met Sally sort of vibe, please read this book. It is so cute. Oh my god. It is the ultimate slow burn romance. It's like the perfect will they or won't they sort of story where you're like, please, 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 please get together. And then when it happens, ah, it was so good. I want to throw up. I love these two. These characters are both relatable in different ways different parts. The banter in this book is so good. It's so funny, so witty. These aren't like surface level characters. Both very, very big personalities. And it's just one of those books that you can read and just 100% feel all of the emotion. Honestly, I feel like my book rating system is so willy-nilly, like just based on my mood of the day, because I feel like if there's certain books that I could read a couple months from now and give a different rating, but I'm going with five stars, okay? Because I just, I loved how this book made me feel. It's been a long time since I have read a romance and just been like, I love this. And this book gave me all of those feels back again and I just, ugh, five stars. You get a five star, you get a five star. And there were absolutely moments in this book where I was like, all right, Josh, you're a little pushy. Or Ari, you are extremely frustrating. But I'm going with the five stars. Honestly, how am I going to read anything after this? Video's over. Okay, hi, good morning. I somehow ended up at Barnes & Noble. I actually had to run a few errands, aka drop like two things off, pick up something from the grocery store, and then I was like, well, I'm out. So, here I am. I have no reason to be here at all, but I did really want to pick up Daisy Hate, so I got it. I don't know if I'm going to start this one today, like in this video, or keep it more cozy fall vibes. I'm gonna see what books I have on my TBR first, but I have been really wanting to get into this and kind of wrap up the Magnolia Park series or keep reading it, I guess. So I grabbed Daisy Hayes and then they had like the 50% off or like buy one, get one 50% off table. So I got this one by Tessa Bailey. I always pass this one and I finally decided to pick it up. And then same with this one, Never Let Me Go. This is actually a shorter read, it looks like, but this has been on my list for a while as well. So. The book buying ban is not going well for me. And then of course, I had to get a pumpkin chai. So honestly, having a nice little morning today. Okay, just got home. I got some candles. This one's so cute. This is pumpkin spice. It smells amazing. Obviously, I had to get it for the little pumpkin jar or whatever though. But this one, this one is top tier. They had a really cute jar of this one. It was like, twice the size, 20 bucks. I was like, let's relax. So I got this one for 10. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Warm cider and cinnamon. So now I can really be in the fall mood. I think I'm going to, which one do I start with? Why not both? Anyways, let's go figure out what I'm reading first. <laughs> I think I am between these two. I just can't decide. Can you help me choose a book? Yeah, you got your serious face on? Okay. We're gonna choose one of these. Which one? Okay. That's a good choice. <laughs> it is settled. The St. Ambrose School for Girls by Jessica Ward. Such a good little helper. 
Okay, I'm excited. This sounds like a good little fall read. It's described as Heather's meets the Secret Society, thrilling coming of age novel set in a boarding school where the secrets are devastating and deadly. So a thriller, I don't know if this is a YA novel. I also have not read The Secret History yet, but I love Heather. And I do usually like a boarding school setting, so I think that this will be fun. So exclusive boarding school, Sarah Taylor arrives carrying more baggage than what fits in her suitcase. She's not like other girls. But the queen bee of St. Ambrose's is Greta Stanhope, and she decides to pick Sarah as her target from day one. Most popular, powerful, horrible girl at school is relentless in making sure Sarah knows what her pecking order is. Sarah is determined not to give Greta the satisfaction of breaking her, but when a scandal unfolds and someone ends up dead, her world threatens to unravel in ways she could never have imagined. Actually on the front, there's a quote from Lisa Gardner. She says, mean girls meets we were liars. I didn't like the book We Were Liars, but I definitely love Mean Girls. So I think I'm going to like like that bitchy, satirical sort of, I hope it's like satirical humor. I'm excited. I'm gonna light my little fall candles, put on some sweatpants, and get into this. Back at the kitchen table. Drink of the day. I made grilled cheese for dinner and some cheese enchilada soup to dip it in. I did this like copycat recipe of the Starbucks grilled cheese. Is it good? You try. Just try. That doesn't sound like very promising. Dip or no dip? I didn't dip yet. I just took a bite. Take a bite first. Try it without the dip. And you can dip after. I really it's like really, it. It's really good. It's really good. You, mm. did, you did a great job. I just didn't want to say anything. <laughs> that is so good. I always love grilled cheese and soup, and it's like finally a gloomy fall day here, so I was leaning into it. I'm starting chapter six, page 48. And so far, I really like this book. The cattiness is just very funny and like immature but i really like how this is written and i feel like we're starting to get into like a little bit more than just like teenage girl bullying and something a little bit more sinister so it is turning out really really good so far so i'm gonna keep reading this enjoy my olipop and my delicious grilled cheese and i will get back to you guys on how i feel about it Okay, I finally got a little bit over 100 pages into this book. Chapter 11, page 107, and I am enjoying this book. There are certain points where, like, the main character, she struggles with mental illness and, like, self-harming. I know she takes lithium, but I don't really know what that's prescribed for. Bipolar disorder or major depressive disorder. She hasn't actually specified what she's medicated for yet, so I am just speculating, but she goes into like these long fantasies or hallucinations, and at some point it's like a little hard to keep up with. <laughs> but sometimes I do get a little bit frustrated with her and her point of view, because this is 1991. She is an angsty, like 15 year old girl. So, you know, take that into consideration. Everything is very, very dramatic. She is constantly talking about like how she is embarrassed of taking this medication and she doesn't want people to find out and la 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 again it is 1990s so totally different world for medication and mental illness especially so as i'm reading it now i'm like girl i don't even know anyone that isn't medicated at this point overall though i am liking it it's just like mean teenage girl pettiness nothing super crazy has happened yet in this book just like mean bullying pranks and stuff but it's definitely alluding to something more sinister than that but today is actually thursday and starbucks is doing buy one get one free drinks afternoon so I am going to get a little bevy for myself and for Hugo and then probably come back, make some quick lunch and 
finish this. My goal is to finish this today. I do also need to start on my chapters for my book club. I have like a hundred pages to read for Alice Feeney's Good Bad Girl. So I, I'm feeling ambitious today. All right, we're gonna get it all done. Anyways, let's go get some pumpkin spice. <laughs> This book is making me so emotional. When I first started this book, I definitely, well, I didn't really know what to expect in general, but I definitely did not anticipate it to be so centered around the main character's mania and mental illness and just like how that shapes everything. I don't know, it just covers like a lot of really sensitive topics and that was not what I was expecting out of this. So definitely, a warning i'm only halfway through this book but i feel like a lot of it could be highly triggering for some people so yeah i kind of like reading about the main character's inner reflections inner monologue and it just feels very genuine very real this is also a slow burn like the last book where i'm like halfway through the book and i feel like i still haven't really gotten to the meat of the story Ugh. This book is making me sad. I was not expecting to be sad. I was expecting like a light, bitchy, funny, mean girls sort of vibe. It's a little bit more serious. <laughs> However, I am still enjoying it. So, <sighs> gotta wrap this one up. I finished it. Ah! Did you come over to celebrate too? This book turned out to be completely different than what I was anticipating it to be. It is a very slow burn. It's almost like two thirds of the way in, things start to really happen. There's a lot of like character building, I guess, background information that you need to know before the nitty gritty of it all. And then things just start happening. I think this was a fun, <sighs> fun's probably not the best <laughs> descriptor for this book. At the end, it got really fun and exciting and thrilling, but there's definitely points in this book where I was really emotional. It definitely made me a little teary-eyed. There's a lot of sensitive subjects, but I do think it is a good like dark academia sort of thriller, especially for the season. I don't feel like Mean Girls meets We Were Liars is a really good sum up, sum, summary, summary? Not a good summary of this book. There's a little bit of the Mean Girls aspect because like bitchy popular girl, but by that descriptor, I thought it was going to be a little bit more satirical, funny. I guess I kind of understand the We Were Liars part because there's like, you kind of have like an unreliable narrator. I was kind of teetering back and forth between if I wanted to give this three stars or four stars, but ultimately I think I'm gonna go with four stars for this one. I liked it. The writing was really good. I didn't really know where it was going at some parts. I will say at the end, I guessed what happened. I felt like that was pretty obvious, but it was still enjoyable to read. So yeah. Three cheers to Boa for choosing this book for me. <laughs> Next, I gotta wrap up my chapters for The Good Bad Girl.
Okay, hello. I ended up finishing my designated chapters for the week this morning. This book is so extremely hard to describe. It's honestly very, very confusing. I feel like a lot of Alice Feeney books, especially Rock, Paper, Scissors, things don't really start clicking together until like the very end. That's kind of where I'm at with this book. It is really, really good. It makes me want to keep going. All I know is there are four women, two sets of mother and daughter, and we have each of the four women's point of views in this book. And these two pairs are somehow connected. So you're kind of on like this wild goose chase trying to figure out how each one is connected and then you'll find out how one is connected to one and you're like, okay, but how do you tie into this other person? I don't know. It's confusing, it's hard to explain, which is especially tricky because I do write up like these big posts for my book club, like weekly discussions and kind of go over what happened in the book and ask like questions and where do you think this is going? Like who do you think did it or whatever? And this one is just like, <laughs> I don't even know what to write. I don't even know what's happening. So finished that. I only have like a third of the book left for next week. But I decided I am going to finish out this reading vlog with A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. I actually started this a week or two ago. I brought it with me on my trip to Dallas and I just didn't really end up reading there. So I only got 25 pages in and then I just kind of forgot to pick it back up. But it's such a quick read, I figured why not? It's only 254 pages, so I definitely wanna finish it. It starts off like very like wham bam, things are going on. Little blurb on the back is a chic food critic with a quite literal voracious appetite for her lovers puts the same care and attention into murder as she does her writing. And basically, at the start of this book, the main character, she's in prison. So she has been caught for her murders and then I suspect that it will kind of like go take us back and detail her crimes and her murders. I'm assuming there are more than one. So the plan is to read this today. It's actually like 5 p.m. already so I probably will read this a little bit later tonight. I simply cannot do this. I really wanted to and I tried to but I cannot. I cannot, I can't read anymore. I'm only like 40% of the way through this book. I don't think that I have ever DNF'd a book in a reading vlog before. I always just push through and finish it, but I can't, I can't do it. This book is not, it's not, it's not good. What made me pick up this book is like hot, sexy food critic eats men. I don't even really know where to start with this book. It's just very, wordy and pretentious which i thought was just like an artistic choice because the main character is clearly a psychopath a narcissist so the writing would be as well but to me it just felt like maybe a high school student trying to write something with shock value and be like a little bit edgy and it's just not getting there it's just we're just talking in circles the main character is like i'm so hot and so sexy and so much better than everyone but nothing is really happening in the book for me to be like, yes, queen, you are. Simply put, I wanted more murder, less life story. It's just mostly this book is about like food and sex, which could have been really good tied in with the cannibalism, but the cannibalism is like 10% of the book, if that. Mostly, I just felt like I was just like reading her horny diary or something. The sex is just, like I cannot emphasize enough how badly the author wanted this to be like shocking and absurd, like clutch your pearls sort of thing. But it just, it wasn't, it wasn't giving. And speaking of, I was going through the Goodreads reviews because I was like, there's absolutely no way that people are, I don't know, I don't know. I just, I needed to see what other people thought, okay? And there were so many funny reviews. I'm going to pop a few on the screen because they, they really nailed it. But yeah, honestly, I was really disappointed with this one because it just felt like it was trying way too hard and it just wasn't, it wasn't putting out what it should have. And a lot of the words, like I said, it's very wordy and pretentious, but a lot of these like large thesaurus words that the author is using 
there were so many that were just incorrectly placed in sentences just to like have a large word there and i was like that doesn't even make sense and i still i'm not sure if is that an artistic choice or is it just simply bad writing overall this was not for me i did not enjoy it and i cannot finish this I cannot. If you finish this, I don't know how. Honestly, I hate to close out this video with a DNF, but I just cannot inflict any more torture on my psyche right now. Nevertheless, I hope that you enjoyed this video and had fun hanging out and getting in the fall mood with me. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in today's video and what you thought. I'm curious to see if we are on the same page. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye!